I really want to build something that we can pass down and comfortably retire on. And I want that too, but I have a hard time looking past the immediate. You know, it's always sunshine and rainbows for me, and he's able to see the things that could go wrong in the future, and he kind of protects us from all that by being the rational one. My name's Norberto Orellana and I'm 24 years old. My name's Elena Brodus and I'm 23 years old. Together we make $78,000 a year. And we live in Gillette, Wyoming. So right now I'm headed to my job and it's about two minutes away. I usually wake up at 5.30 in the morning my wife goes in to work first, and then afterwards I'll go in, I'll be in usually by 8 a.m. So I work 6.30 to 8.30, and then I go in again at 1 to 7. I grew up in poverty, and I spent a decent amount of time homeless. And I had a number of operations to correct issues with my legs. mom was a single mom and so there was a little bit of turmoil there especially with me and my sister both having a pretty serious bone condition you get soft bones that bend you get teeth that chip we didn't have a lot growing up we were kind of broke but we were never out of love it just made me a really optimistic person I was studying early childhood education and I did not finish that out. We realized we both had gone through a lot of the same experiences, we both had had the same surgeries, and we really connected over that and our personalities just really meshed well together. I don't know, it was fate. <laughs> I decided to go get a PhD. I didn't finish that. And that's really because I didn't realize all that it entailed. I was also raised to believe that you had to get a terminal degree to be successful. And as I grew up, I really realized that you don't have to do that. You can be successful in so many other ways. I did not come from a family that really budgeted. The money just always ran out. And I do it in like a proper accounting software. It's really to an extreme extent, but it brings me joy and I find it comforting to know exactly where everything is. So when I go to the store, I just look at the budget. I go, okay, this is on it, this is not and so I can just slowly cross things off. I make sure to keep my receipts. Right now, I think we're down to a comfortable $450 a month on groceries. And I think a large part in that is that we're following a diet called the carnivore diet right now. We're not following it super strictly though, and our kids are on a perfectly normal diet. So we still get other items. Well, we love to play video games and we enjoy watching movies every now and then. I think my biggest hobby would probably be my saxophone and my guitar, most of which was self-taught. We knew right away that we would want kids. We looked at all the expenses that you have for kids 
But we were like, oh, well, we can do this. We really didn't realize how expensive kids were, and we didn't realize that our daughter would be sick. It was just kind of young and childish and thinking, oh, we can do this. And, well, we did. We made it work. <laughs> Budget-wise, her medicine is quite expensive and not all of it is currently covered by our insurance. But we also have to continue paying because we need the coverage for other things that come up, of course. Both at work, the kids go to the daycare. Daycare for both of our girls costs about $1,100 a month. It was really hard to justify, but... Daycare offers a lot. They have a before school program and an after school program. So in theory, our kids can continue to go to this daycare all the way through elementary school. So our mortgage is a little over $1,000 a month and the interest rate is about 2.625%. It's a three bed, one bath house. You know, to us it's huge. I feel like it's a pretty modest house. It gives us so much to want to protect. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that they have this home to grow up in. We were paying that off right now, it's frozen because of uh, the pandemic and everything, but we'll go back to paying that off and we're gonna pay it off pretty quickly. We plan to really take care of them and keep them as long as possible. Once we pay off these cars, it's just gonna free up so much money that we'll be able to save, invest, and pay off the house with. We don't really have a savings account. That's something we're planning to do in the immediate future. Right now, all the money that we have left over has really been put towards tackling the debt on the cars to get that out of the way because that will free up so much money in the future. So right now we don't have any sort of investment accounts. I think the circumstances that I was in put me in the mindset that I needed to as far remove myself from those circumstances as physically possible. It's not gonna have an impact on our lives really, but it will have the psychological impact of that where I'm halfway towards six figures in my own income, which is a big accomplishment for me considering where I came from growing up and the kind of incomes that my family had. There are no circumstances that you can't claw your way out of and build something from. And I think that's important to really share with others is we're not at the end yet. This is what the beginning of the journey looks like. 